My name is Peter Bruce and uh, along with my colleague Mauro Pasta, we have the pleasure of uh, running the uh, Solbat project within the Faraday Institution. That's the project uh, uh, investigating all solid state uh, batteries and it's a great pleasure to have the opportunity today to tell you something about this project. So I recognize that of course we have a very wide range of, uh, of people uh, um, taking part in this conference so let me just start by reminding everyone what a solid state battery is and some of the pros and cons. So this is a, a schematic of a solid state battery. Uh, it consists of uh, a solid electrolyte represented here by the orange uh, spheres instead of a conventional liquid. And then we have uh, a lithium metal negative electrode shown here. And we have a composite cathode, a mixture of the solid electrolyte and the active cathode uh, materials. So that's the basic construction of a solid state battery. And here are some of the advantages and then some of the disadvantages. So one advantage is safety because we're not using uh, uh, liquid electrolytes <coughs> that uh, are flammable, organic liquid electrolytes that are flammable. There's also a potential advantage in power density because in liquids you have both the cations and anions moving and this can lead to concentration polarization, especially in the pores of the porous cathode. Uh, um, because you only have the lithium ions moving in a solid electrolyte, that shouldn't happen. So potentially you could have faster charge and discharge rates. Uh, it uh, also enables the use of lithium metal anodes, which is something extremely challenging if you try to use lithium metal directly with a liquid organic electrolyte and could lead to longer calendar and cycle life. Of course, there are also some disadvantages. Um, it's an unproven technology. Uh, the cost may be initially higher. Uh, there are still questions about the manufacturability of solid state batteries uh, since they're not already in the marketplace. So this has to be um, addressed. And uh, the underlying science really relate, relates to something called electrochemical mechanics. So the coupling of electrochemistry and um, mechanics, which is something that's not very typical in studies of, uh, of electrochemistry or indeed in, in batteries. Just to give a flavor of the sort of performance uh, advances that might be possible, here's the energy density gravimetric and volumetric. Currently we are around 250 watt hours per kilogram, 700 watt hours per liter with a lithium ion battery. And one can project around 400, maybe higher watt hours per kilogram uh, for solid state and 1200 watt hours per liter. Now, uh, the nature of Faraday projects is that we really bring together um, uh, a very strong team of uh, experts uh, across a range of disciplines uh, to bring together those that expertise that's really necessary to address some of those fundamental scientific challenges that are um, holding up the advances of solid state uh, batteries. And you see the team here. Uh, we have a number of uh, uh, senior co-investigators that you see along the top rows here, and then a, a wonderful group of postdocs and students uh, who are working together on the challenges uh, that face, the fundamental scientific challenges that face solid state batteries. So here are the challenges that we're addressing uh, in Solbat. Um, uh, four major challenges covering four work packages. The, uh, the problems related to the lithium metal solid electrolyte interface represented here. Uh, the challenges, which I'll come back to in a moment, the challenges are related to the cathode, um, which involve things like volume change of the active cathode materials leading to disconnection, also reactivity. We have a work package on addressing materials discovery because uh, we don't really have, or one doesn't really have yet, the, uh, the ideal solid electrolyte for solid state batteries. And we're also working on challenges related to, um, uh, to uh, cell fabrication. Uh, just a note that, um, and this is not to be critical of, uh, or, or of anyone, but uh, there are a lot of papers in the, in the literature that use low current densities or small capacities or whatever. It's important in, 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 as one tries to tackle the fundamental problems facing solid state batteries, that one does so using realistic current densities, realistic capacities, etc. So I want to address um, uh, just pull out one particular um, piece of work that we've done because time is very short um, in this project. 
and that is uh, the work we've been doing around the, the lithium metal solid electrolyte anode, uh, particularly identifying the problems of void formation on, on discharge. So uh, we're going to look at this interface between lithium metal and this compound, which is a gyridite, which is one of the potentially attractive uh, solid um, electrolytes. And what you're seeing here is constant current charging and discharging of a, of a, a lithium solid state cell, lithium anode based solid state cell. And we're, we're doing this at a current of one milliamp per square centimeter. We're applying three megapascals of pressure to the cell and we measure the voltage of this electrode as we charge and discharge. We're using three electrode cells, which allows us to study the stripping and plating of lithium at one interface. So we can decouple stripping and plating, and this is important. So you see the initial plating involves virtually no change in polarization, whereas the initial stripping uh, shows an increase in polarization. We're plating and stripping five microns of lithium. If you take a, a, a cross section and look in the SEM at the end of the first strip uh, plating, you see a nice conformal interface. This is lithium metal, this is the solid electrolyte. At the end of the, um, the first uh, stripping, you already see the problems of void formation entering here. And then if we keep cycling, you see an increased polarization on stripping, but you very quickly come back to almost the same <coughs> polarization on subsequent plating, very flat polarization, very similar to the first cycle. If you take an SEM image uh, cross section here, you see significant detachment, which um, correlates with this large polarization because all the current is going through uh, just a, a, a much reduced contact area. Um, if you look at the end of the next plating, you see again this nice conformal interface, but you also see some voids that have formed in the, uh, in the lithium metal. And this gives something of a clue to what's happening. Uh, of course, after that, you then get the short circuit uh, and the cell dies. So in the interest of time, it's, it's easier just to, to show you what, uh, summarize a lot of work um, in, this, uh, in this slide that you see here. So this is essentially what happens on plating and stripping. Uh, here's the uh, pristine electrode or the pristine cell, I should say, or with the pristine interface. Then after a few cycles, you get voids formed at this interface. Now voids form, this is the critical equation. When the flux of lithium ions away from the interface exceeds the flux of lithium to that interface. And this is mainly, um, lithium is mainly transported to the interface by diffusion and by creep. When you have this condition, you will always get voids. On subsequent stripping, nu lithium nucleates at these points here and then grows as a film across the interface. So a small amount of charge can cover lith the, lith the solid electrolyte again with lithium. And this is why you get this very rapid return to low polarization. Then what happens uh, is as you keep on plating, uh, you get some of these voids occluded in the lithium metal. You saw that in the SEM. And then when you strip again, of course, every time you strip, you create voids, but you then bring these occluded voids back to the interface. So you accumulate more and more voiding on stripping. That explains the polarization increase. And in the subsequent plating, um, all the current is going through a small uh, contact area, which is just the conditions you want to form lithium dendrites that dry through the ceramic and cause short circuits. So the take home message here is that actually, although a lot of focus in the past has been on the critical current for, for, for dendrite formation, that's on plating, it turns out the critical current for stripping, which is often lower, really sets the, the, the limit on current density. You want the highest current density, but what gets you as you try to increase the current density is you hit the stripping current, the CCS, critical current for stripping, that's this condition is met. And above that, you'll get voids, you'll inevitably get poor contact on cycling, dendrite formation and cell failure and short circuit, as is noted here. This problem, uh, this problem of voiding, of course, is dependent on pressure and temperature because it depends on creep. Um, and I want to hand over now to my, uh, my colleague, an excellent uh, member of the team, 
uh, Dominic Spencer Jolly, who will take you through the effects of pressure and temperature. Thanks very much, uh, uh, Dom, for, uh, for that excellent description. I just want to end by pointing out that uh, we have talks from, uh, from members of Solbat, um, from Matthew Dyer from, Liz from Liverpool, and Alexandra Mosher from, also from Liverpool, and we have posters um, uh, from Cameron Hargreaves, Elvis Shoko, and Dominic Spencer-Jolly, who you've just heard from. And I want to finally thank you very much for your attention.